Alright guys, we got a TD-15 in the shop here today. This is a old, well, looks like an 81 model, I believe. Something we don't work on every day. I actually grew up running these machines. Um, made by International Harvester, this one was. I come out with this design in, I think, 1972. We was going to do a full service on it, and we thought we might show you. Show you some things if anybody's... I know there's a few of these machines around. Um, this actually has 1,600 original hours on it. Um, actually has all the original factory International Harvester rails. It's a little hard to see, but you can see the... There's IH stamped on those rails. The pads are all original. It's all original rollers. Another thing to look at, this is the equalizer bar. Um, actually still has the shims in it right here. I don't know if you can see those yet, but... Um, I think factory specs, I'd have to look in the book, is anywhere between half inch to three quarters clearance. As that wears more, that button down there, you take these shims and stuff out. But as you can see, that one's right in, uh, right in the range here. Looks like all original stuff. Um, blades clean as can be on it. Just all the pins are tight, all that stuff. We put a few new hoses on it. We're going to do a full service on the engine. Engine, transmission, hydraulics. Um, Skyler's already drained the engine oil out of it. Right now he's changing the coolant condition filter. He's shutting the valve off so we don't have coolant coming out there. But what that does, that protects your cooling system. Um, getting electrolysis through the, uh, the back side of the liners, pitting and stuff like that. So. Get you another filter here. This helps out in the uh, corrosion aspect of things, but it's gonna stick out on there. We already changed the uh, oil filters. This has a DT466. It actually has an inline Bosch pump on it, but these are excellent motor. Everybody knows the reputation they have. Um, we're going to change the hydraulic tank filter. It's inside here. We've got to pull that lid off. We're going to suction all it out, drain it out. Uh, transmission filters are over here on this one. They're in the side here, actually. The earlier TD-15Cs actually were down in the floorboard under there. It was a little harder to get to. This is a later series. So we've got two transmission filters here, the canister type. And then behind here, I don't know if you can see it, we get it apart, you can look at it. There's actually a magnetic uh, strainer screen filter in there. I always like to take those apart and see what's going on in there. Um, but here's your inline Bosch injection pump. They started that in the early 80s, switched over from the rotary style pump. So this is basically the later series of these tractors. They're just good, well-balanced tractors. Uh, I grew up, I started running one when I was nine years old actually, so. We've got to do a few things to this one. Somebody's boogered up the fan blade in it. It's got a reversible fan on it, but I don't know what they've done. I'm trying to twist the blades around or something, but we're going to replace that. And like I say, give it a complete service. We'll check the final drives here. Um, this also has a pivot shaft on it, like most of your bigger dozers. Um, I believe the first ones actually had fiber bushings in them, and they actually had problems with them and switched over to bronze later, but. We'll pull it out. I think they used to run oil in them from the factory. We usually just put grease in them because that stuff's long gone. Um, another thing to tell us the low hour tractors, these shims right here. This is all tight and nothing's wore out there. But the shims there in the, the blade, blade pins too. But so we're going to go through and check everything out, put all new filters in. I've actually got um, Actually, a bunch of old stock from our old excavating business uh, that we had. We used to run a couple of these all the time. So, but we'll get everything changed and get some new fluids back in it. All right, I was going to show you here underneath the tankers. I shut off for the fuel. We're going to change the fuel filters. And I actually got a little leak on the pump. Um, the hand primer pump's leaking. So, there's actually a shut off underneath the tanks on these. I'll shut this fuel off so we don't have fuel running down everywhere. Now we can go ahead and pop the fuel filters out. We'll change those out and then we'll show you guys how to bleed them out. We've got a little leak on this 
um, hand primer pump. We're actually going to use that to bleed these fuel filters. They've got a little bleeder screw up here. Um, pump them full so you get uh, all the air and stuff out. But we'll get those changed and we'll show you how to bleed them. All right, so Skyler's changed the fuel filters here, and I actually put a, another primer pump on here. We had one off the Mercedes Unimog yesterday with the same type of Bosch pump. But these little um, primer pumps, hand pumps, are basically just super simple, but they got a little piston in there. So every time you move that up and down, it's sucking fuel and pumping it up towards your filters or wherever you're trying to go. Um, they go bad over in Center Lake. We probably could take this in part and rebuild it, but... We just had one sitting on the um, toolbox from yesterday. It actually wasn't bad. We replaced it with something else. But anyway, we got a, got that on here. Skyler, you got that um, this little bleeder screw on top. This is actually brass. You want to be careful not to tighten it up too tight. But loosen that up. It's got a couple uh, holes in it. That will let the uh, fuel and air out. Other way. The whole thing turn or just the, the whole thing get you another wrench and hold the bottom so what's happening this whole uh, bottom piece is turning you don't want that so you're going to hold the bottom and do that so these pumps in the uh, stored position they actually have screws uh, threads that hold them down so when you get done with them you got to push them and tighten them up and keep them in the stored position like that so to Operating, you gotta loosen them up, unthread it. Got that broke loose. Make sure you tighten your bottom one back up. It's been a couple days since it's been apart. Couple. Another thing you can do too, if you say your pump or your bleeder screw's broken, just fill those filters up with fuel before you put them on there. Plumb full. And if you have to, you could always crack a line or something loose too and bleed them out that way. But um, we'll pump this up. Hopefully this one works. Go ahead and pump that there. You opened the uh, fuel tank up, right? Yeah. Yeah, keep pumping. You gotta keep going until you get all the air bubbles out and it's going to be the same on a lot of the older equipment they're all going to have a little lift pump whether it's a one inside the engine block or something like that sometimes they got a little tickler i always call them a tickler a little finger on them but all right so it took about a minute or so pumping but we've got good fuel coming out no air so he's going to tighten that dude up right, for 7 16th wrench and we, um, a lot of times I'll give them a couple pumps afterwards too, just to make sure we got everything sealed up good. So. What we're doing now, we're taking the transmission filters loose. I always like to put a paint on them to catch the, uh, there'll be oil run out of these dudes. These are canister type. I'd say the older series tractors were actually under the floorboard down in there, a little harder to get to. The later, I think around 80 or so, they put them out here. It should be good, Scott. You can probably do it. Uh, comes a helicopter. Push on that sideways and break that seal. They coming after you? on there mm -hmm. it's original international harvester stuff mm -hmm. it may have never been changed it's hard to tell I don't know if there's a date on there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
1983 is that filter. A couple days old. Get rid of that. So it's been a few years since those have been out. You and I both know that International Harvester has not made any uh, dozers for a couple of days. dump that out and we need to clean clean these out so he's going to go dump the water there and we'll actually clean these housings out they don't look too bad and they're pretty clean but so this um other filter that's left back here is actually the magnetic strainer for the transmission there's like three magnetic bars in there so we'll take it out next clean it out inspect it and see what's going on all right skyler's got this stuff cleaned up we got those magnets all cleaned up this is the suction strainer filter again that goes in the back back here and this is something on any equipment dozer especially this older stuff everything has a suction screen filter whenever you have problems or something that is the first thing to look for um because those things i've seen these things get clogged up you know whether it's nasty thick gooey oil or just trash and stuff over years nobody ever changes these a lot of times they may be in the bottom of the transmission but they're going to be anywhere where their transmission pump sucking oil out of the pickup area the transmission housing or international actually did us a favor and put this one up here in the later ones the earlier ones like i said were down below but we've got new filters in these canisters we've got new o-rings we're going to lube these up put a little grease on here um i have an o-ring on the outside i guess instead of it seals up right here and this has an o-ring up here so we're going to get that all put back together and uh skyler's got uh you got new air filters in yep. putting your air filters in up there inner and outers um you got new fuel filters on new engine oil filters we'll drain the oil out of the transmission um probably drain these finals too they've not been probably ever changed and we'll do the hydraulic tank so we'll show you guys that when we get over there all right so we got the transmission filters back in we're underneath the dozer now we're getting ready to um drain out the um main transmission housing actually the rear end housing excuse me you got a drain here your final jobs are back here we'll drain those out here clean those but, um we'll drain the main frame housing out and we'll come up here you guys can see that light up here we actually got a transmission housing uh right there we'll take that plug out right there and then we've got the torque converter we'll actually drain it out too it's a wet torque converter on these but that's your torque converter up there and your transmission but we'll start back here and get this drained out and go from there system you're not getting changed so we'll uh get this all these plugs also have um their pipe plugs so we put thread tape on there i know it's hard to see i've got it oiled already but we always like to put thread tape back on those so they um seal up and don't leak but we'll get uh next thing we're going to do we're going to pop clean these plugs out here and pop oil all these final drives all right we got the right hand final drive draining oil is pretty black and old looking there's actually the plug out of it, magnetic plug, not very much stuff on it, so that is a good sign. I doubt this oil's probably been changed either. Now this one over here is giving us a little tougher time. We don't want to round that dude out. 
So I'm actually gonna take the torch and heat up around here a little bit, try to heat that metal up and expand it and see if we can't get it out before we mess things up, so. All right, we didn't have any luck trying to heat that plug up. We tried it a couple times, let it cool down. And as you can see, we have rounded it out. So our next um, method of attack here, I took a die grinder and cleaned that up a little bit. We actually drove a 5 8 bolt in there. And I'm going to um, put a nice bead of weld around that and let her cool down and we'll see if we can get it out that way. Sometimes heating up that plug, um, the heat from the welder will actually cut some of that rust loose too. But uh, hopefully we get enough grip and we'll get her pulled out. All right, I got a 5 8 bolt in there. We got welded up around it. Um, we'll see how to break it loose now. See how strong Skyler Corbin is. Ooh, look at that. Jackpot. Might be warm yet. Yep. You can get your pan over there. You get this side drained out. So when you go to drain these, that warm a little bit. When you go to drain these, there's actually two places. You got to drain this inside and the outside. I'll show you that here in a second. Plugs, magnetic. It's got a little bit of stuff on it. We'll probably have to get a new plug. That plug's no good. But anyway, these final drives have... Um, it's all one cavity the wool runs across but see you've got a lower section here and it's got to run up through the shaft and outer sun gear so you've got to actually drain both sides out this is the outside cavity where we'll fill it from we've already loosened up these plugs so this is going to be your drain plug we'll turn it and put it directly on the bottom down here there's actually lines here it says oil level so you get those lines level that's where your oil level needs to be but so we'll drain these outer housings. We've got the one inner already drained. We'll drain both the outers. And we'll put new, uh, we run gear oil on these. Um, another 85, 140. We've got the transmission filled back up. We do have to um, start it to check that. So it's got to suck oil up in the torque converter transmission, those filters. About any of these dozers with these power shift transmissions. Normally check when running out of idle so that's when you want to check oil level because they'll show over full not running but uh, we'll get that double checked and we'll show you guys next how to change a hydraulic filter all right so we're uh, here on the hydraulic tank it's just this little one on the side of the fuel tank here in the tractor um, it's got a row of 3 8 bolt in it 9 16 socket but under here there's a hydraulic filter inside this tank so we're going to pop it off there's a gasket in there, but you see down there, this thing's about out of oil, but you guys can see down there, there's a metal, metal can that holds the hydraulic filter. We'll undo that, and uh, we're actually going to drain the tank out or suck the rest of it out. There's a drain on the bottom of the tanks on these, so you can drain it out. We'll probably just suck it out. It's a little easier for us, so there's actually another metal screen I'll show you guys in there once we get it sucked out, like the transmission, the suction screen for the hydraulic pump. We'll get it cleaned out, too. All right, so we took this nut off down here, it's an inch and a sixteenth, and we're going to pull up this metal pan, and it's just a cover for the filter, if I remember right. We'll clean that off, you got that? Now we've got a, um, if I remember right, this thing spins off here, there's a round, uh, round hole in here, and you just take that and spin that loose, it's threaded on there, and it's got your hydraulic filter in there. Before we do that, we'll probably pump most of this oil out of here, so. Alright guys, we got this tank cleaned out about the best we could. There's actually a, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. There's actually a, uh, another suction screen, kind of like the transmission, right down there. It's hard to see. It's got the magnets everything on it. It's really clean. Actually, the whole tank was pretty clean. Filter was excellent. So, uh. That's a good sign. I doubt that's ever been drained out, cleaned out in 40 years. But anyway, we got new filters in there, or a filter. We're going to put on uh, that cover back over this filter. We'll put a little silicone on this rim here and bolt her back down and fill her up with the oil. 
and then we're going to uh, finish up on the final drives. We got to get them level and get the transmission topped off the rest of the way. And uh, I think we got to do a couple of adjustments on the steering clutches and brakes. But I'll show you guys that how all that works too. So, all right, one more thing on this hydraulic tank. We got the uh, cover back on, silicone to gasket. All your tanks are going to have a breather on them, some sort, transmission, whatnot. This has a brass bronze filter on it. We pulled the cover off of it. It's really clean. We blowed that little brake clearing and uh, sprayed it out. But it seems really good. But that's something to check too. Those hydraulics got to breathe in and out. So these just have a simple cover and a snap ring. It holds them back on there. Just want to show you that's something that gets overlooked a lot of times too. Especially when something's older. You don't know if mud daubers got up in there or whatnot. So we'll get that back on there. All right, we're gonna grease the pivot shafts now. Almost every dozer, like from your John Deere side, 700 up, your D6Ks and on up, will have a pivot shaft in them. And basically what that means, this whole track frame pivots up and down, makes them ride smoother, grade better. Every machine's a little bit different, but they are basically the same in that aspect of it. Um, these older internationals just had grease in them. Um, I think the early ones actually had a fiber. There's a shaft that comes through here and they had fiber bushings in them. I think they may update them to bronze bushings later. Um, I had some issues with the fibers, but anyway, we're gonna, we already got this plug broke loose. And uh, now you're, a lot of your later newer tractors actually run a gear oil in those, the John Deere's and cats and whatnot. But we took out that, I think it's a three quarter inch pipe plug. And I've got an adapter here, a stack of adapters down to the eighth inch. Uh, grease fitting on there so we're gonna grab that grease gun there and usually put about um, oh, 50 shots of grease in there we may do a little bit more because they probably not grease these in a while you can see there's some grease on the end of that but we may put about 75 shots in each side here you don't want to do too much and blow the seals out of it but we'll go ahead and get those filled up with grease we'll do the other side and that'll be good but that's something on a hold that on there Skyler a lot of dozers it's overlooked on the uh, on just about, like I say, anything from a 700 size or bigger, all your 850s has got them. Um, and your smaller, like your 650 on down size machines will not have them because the track frames are solid and they do not pivot. But, um, say most of the newer machines run oil in them. These back in always run grease. We always put about 50 shots of grease in them every 100 hours or so. It's just the way we did things on them, so. But we'll get that plug put back in there and we'll do the other side. You guys can hear me. I want to show you something here on these um, uh, TD 15C. I have a power booster back here. I'll shut this off and explain it a little bit. That power booster does take some of that pressure off that, uh, makes it easier for it. It's like having power steering. Basically, this lever is hard to pull, and you see it gets real easy there. Those boosters, they get wore a little bit, or the linkage does, and they need to adjust. Usually, you can turn the turn buckle in a turn. I'll show you in the back. But when you get on one of these, and it's real hard, and it gets easy. It's usually those steering boosters aren't coming on quick enough. You're moving the lever before you move the steering booster. So, there's an adjustment back here I'll show you on those. Also, notice that the steering brakes get back here pretty close to the seat, so we'll adjust those up. I don't like pulling on that far. Uh, I'll show you on that. Uh, show you on that steering booster what I'm talking about back here basically International had a really slick setup the cats and stuff did not have those but right here are these little steering boosters I don't know if you guys can see those I'm gonna have to get a light in here but um, this is rod coming from the um, steering lever up here basically these are like having power steering power booster is what they're called but I actually have a mark that's supposed to line up there but what happens you take these pins out turn this in usually only takes a half turn or so unless they're out too far but tighten that linkage up so the first thing it starts moving is actually this booster arm and it will supply oil give you a little um it doesn't take much effort to pull the lever back that way but you get that little hard section in there before it gets easy that's what that is so we'll do that and we'll get up in there and adjust the uh, steering brakes on it too they're just a little bit farther back and I'd like to see they've probably never been adjusted but like I say there's one for each side left and right but uh, usually like I say normally it's 9 16 wrench back at adjuster off turn them in usually a half turn and uh, it's usually enough but 
All right, guys, I wanted to show you this again. I know I showed you. Um, this is your little steering booster, and I actually had to adjust those about a turn and a half in. Um, what that does is it kicks that booster in a little quick. They wouldn't come in quick enough. You had a little hard spot to begin with. So if you got a hard spot on your levers, like the first, say, half an inch, inch of pull, and then it gets real easy, those are the dudes you need to crank those turnbuckles in. Sometimes a half turn's enough. This one probably hadn't been adjusted for a long time, so I had to go one and a half turns. Um, other thing adjusted was the steering brakes. These TD15s. Down under, this is the side the transmission filters are. Um, you can see down in there, you guys get look there's a bolt right here sometimes i have a square head on them this one is a 7 16 bolt so it's got a 5 8 head and 11 16 jam nut on them um, the other one is on the other side through the hydraulic compartment over there but what you want to do is crank those in if you're looking at a used tractor or something and you think the steering brakes are getting weak on it open the side up and look you, if you don't have any threads left there that means you're uh your brakes are pretty much gone it needs new brakes but as you can see we've got like an inch of adjustment left on that bolt so we got plenty of plenty of brakes on there something else that's showing the true 1600 hours on this tractor so i'm gonna start this up show you if you guys seen earlier those levers were kind of hard to pull we'll start this up got those boosters adjusted up those things are super easy so um, I think we're about done we got the final drives uh, all filled back up um, we're waiting on a fan yet I got to put a fan on that somebody bent the other one so it's supposed to be here tomorrow we have a couple other little things to do we're gonna take out that old heater this thing used to have a cab on it um, we're gonna get uh, get that off there and it's probably going to get a sandblast job we'll leave all the panels and stuff off of it that way we can get all the sand blown out real good and then after we do that we'll go back through here and grease stuff under the floorboards you got some um, steering shafts u-joint the accelerator pedal brake pedal over there something else nobody ever gets us on the end of these brake pivot shafts where that adjuster is there's a grease fitting on each side with the machine there too so that's something we always like to do every time we change oil every hundred hours or something like that so but uh yeah we're about here we should have it wrapped up here tomorrow maybe when this video comes out we'll have her all shine and dined and looking pretty so if you guys are in the market hit us up i don't get these this is a pretty rare piece but um I, <laughs> I say that i actually did pick up another one yesterday but it's got like 3,000 some hours on it. Um, but there again, I've been selling this stuff for oh, 15, 20 years, and I've never had any low hour TD 15 C's like this. So, with this one, we went through, changed all the fluids, filters, final drives, greasy pivot shafts. Like I said, it showed you just, just the brakes and all that stuff on it. Um, and it makes somebody a super nice tractor. It actually had rubber pads bolted on here. That's why you see these holes. It was an Air Force tractor, so they probably run around the concrete, a blacktop, or something like that. So we actually took all that off. That was a big mess, too. So. Also got a couple pads to replace. Um, three of them, they were cracked, so we got new ones ordered. These has 20-inch pads. But this is where the rubber the rubber was. This is actually dirt in between. We're going to get that all cleaned out. Um, but if you guys like this kind of stuff, let us know in the comments. Like and subscribe. Um, like I say, we will have this tractor done here probably by the time the video comes out. So. If you see a thing and you're looking for one, let us know.